My brothers and sisters in Africa and outside Africa and friends of goodwill from other civilizations. As we're working very hard to shape the future we want as Africans, it is important to have a knowledge of the past, the history of our great ancestors, our fathers and our mothers, and also to share the stories of their struggles. So today I'm going to share with you about what is happening in West Africa, the coup d'etats, and also the historic background why there is one coup after another. We have seen more coups than ever before. Of recently, we have seen seven coups happening in West Africa. So without wasting time, I would love to take you through a short historical background of West Africa. Here we are talking about 14 West African countries. In Africa, in 1960, it is commonly referred at the year of independence, Nimwaka wa Uhuru. Many of the West African countries, they gain their political independence. They regain their political independence from their colonial masters. You talk about Benin, it got her independence in 1960. Congo DRC, 1960. We talk about Niger and Nigeria, Burkina Faso, all these countries, they got their independence in 1960s. Our forefathers, they were very happy to be free and they thought they would take charge of their own destiny. There was a celebration all over Africa to see that we are no longer going to be led by colonialists. But little did we know that the colonialists, they were not gone, they were not gone, they were in our backyard through other methods, imperialism and neo-colonialism. And then we started to experience pain one time after another. And even before that, we had leaders like Kwame Nkrumah who saw the danger of the future and he started to tell other African leaders to come together and unite. You will remember there was a meeting in 1963, Kwame Nkrumah together with other 33 African leaders. They came together in Addis Ababa to talk about the future of Africa. And they wanted to create the United States of Africa. But fellow leaders did not understood Nkrumah and his sense of urgency. They listened to him not. And that was the beginning of the suffering of this continent, Africa, and the suffering of West Africa. They tried to create something called Africa Liberation Committee in 1963. And Tanzania was the headquarter of that African Liberation Committee, uh, thinking that Mwalimu, together with other colleagues, will do a very great job to liberate the entire Africa. Yes, they did, but at some point. And then three years later of that meeting in 1966, coup d'etat happened in Ghana. And Kwame Nkrumah as the prophet was the first leader to experience coup d'etat after that meeting in Addis Ababa. He was removed from power. And then we saw other leaders being removed from power through coup d'etats. People like Silvanus Olympio was also removed and many other African leaders. And that was the beginning of pain. You know, these first African leaders, to me, I look at them as the Moses of our generation. Their work was to really deliver us from the chains of slavery, from the chains of colonialism, and to give us freedom. That was their humble role. That was their humble duty. But they did not really give us free liberation. Somehow, we did not experience fully liberation. That's why people like Samora Machel, they said, Aluta Continua. Aluta Continua! Aluta. 
contra o qué? Meaning, the struggle must continue. Lazima mapambano ya endele. So today we'll be talking about the coups in West Africa and why they are happening today. The first coups were very, very bad because they eliminated one of our best leaders in Africa. And I will mention some of the leaders that were eliminated through coup d'etats. That's why I'm saying the coup d'etats have caused us to experience a lot of pain in this continent called Africa. 1966, Kwame Nkrumah was eliminated from power. In Nigeria, Yakubu Gowon in 1975 was also overthrown. Sheshu Shangari of Nigeria in 1983 was also overthrown through coup d'etat. Ernesto Shekekani of Nigeria in 1993 was also eliminated, overthrown through a coup d'etat. And also in, in Sierra Leone, Siaka Steven in 1967 was also eliminated, overthrown through coup d'etats. But he was lucky because he was able uh, to come back to power. But uh, Joseph Momo in 1992 in Sierra Leone was also overthrown through a coup d'etat. Mali, as another African country, experienced a lot of coup d'etats. People like Modiba Keita, a very good African leader, was also um, overthrown through a coup d'etat in 1968. Amadou Toman Tore in 2012 was also overthrown in Mali through a coup d'etat. And then in Niger, 1974, Hamadouri was also eliminated, overthrown through a coup d'etat. And in Gambia, Dawawa Jawara was also eliminated in 1994. In Togo, Silvia, Silvanus Olympio on January 13, 1963, was also overthrown through a coup d'etat. And this was a pain in African continent because these are some of our best leaders who were working very hard to make sure they take African continent to the promised land. Remember, it was Kwame Nkrumah who envisioned one Africa, the United States of Africa, with one currency, with one command center, one army, with one voice, but they listened to him not. As a result, we had many individual states leading their countries to their own direction. We were divided, we were not one. We had the Casablanca group and the Monrovia group. The Casablanca group were the one influenced by Kwame Nkrumah. They wanted unity now. They wanted to see Africa one, but the Monrovia group, they wanted Africa to unite block by block and their approach failed. As the result, we have seen a lot of pain. Even at this moment, Africa is not at peace. We still see one conflict after another. Look, for example, what is happening in DRC Congo. DRC Congo had the best leader in 1960 when they got their independence from Belgium. And Patrice Emery Lumumba was the prime minister. But Patrice Lumumba was eliminated one year later in 1961 through a coup, he was assassinated. And uh, Congo has never remained the same. Till today we see what is happening in Congo. One chaos after another. The children are suffering. Women are suffering even more. And Thomas Sankara of Burkina Faso was also one of the finest leader Africa has ever had, West Africa has ever had. But he was also overthrown through a coup d'etat. He served only for four years and he was ambitious and visionary. He was speaking against imperialism, but he was also overthrown through a coup d'etat. 
he implemented the progressive policies to empower young people, to empower women. But through this, we no longer have Thomas Sankara physically. But in our spirit, we have Thomas Sankara. Thomas Sankara is referred as the Africa Che Guevara. He lived a very short life, but feel full of meaning, full of revolution. People like Thomas Sankara is not a person, but he's simply an idea of revolution, an idea of change. In West Africa, we also had Amilka Cabral. He was the leading Pan-Africanist, seeking the independence of Cape Verde and Guinea-Bissau. But also, he was assassinated few months before Guinea-Bissau became independent. Amilka Cabral was assassinated. Amilka Cabral also is not a person. Amilka Cabral is the spirit of change, the spirit of unity, and the spirit of transformation. He was assassinated in 19. 73 months before Guinea-Bissau got a political independence. And then in Nigeria, we had Mutala Muhammad. He was also assassinated in 1976. He was a good leader trying to bring people together. He's remembered for his anti-corruption efforts. He was fighting corruption. So the first coup d'etat in Africa were eliminating the best leaders Africa had. One by one, wild by wild, they were removed. Even in Angola, Agustino Neto was also eliminated in 1975. So the past has shown one of our best leaders were eliminated because of coups. But even today, as I'm speaking, the culture of coup is happening. And uh, it's a different kind of coups that we're experiencing today. I can say, in my own opinion, the first coups were bad because they eliminated one of our best leaders. But the second coup, we can ask ourselves why they're happening. Are they good or are they bad as the first coups? We are going to have a discussion. For example, when you look at Gabon, you will see in 2023, August 30, a group of senior Gabonese military officers appeared on national tele television and they announced to the public that they have taken over. And uh, Ali Bongo was no longer the president of Gabon. I'm Ali Bongo. On Gimba, president of Gabon. And I'm to send a message to all the friends that we have all over the world to tell them to make noise, to make noise for the people here have arrested me. And they had the reason to do that. They said that people are suffering. There is no development. And we are working to fulfill the interest of French people and not the interest of our own Gabonese. The incidences of corruption and other factors of insecurities, they announce this is the reason why they have taken power from Ali Bongo. And Ali Bongo and his family, they have been in power for 56 good years. One family leading Gabon. But Gabon has not yet experience that level of development. And Ali Bongo, remember, he was seeking, he was seeking to be the president for the third term. And also the national body, the electoral committee of Gabon announced that Ali Bongo won the election. But there was no free and fair election. This is the reason why also the coup d'etat happened in Gabon because there was no internet service so that people were not aware of what was happening. Another thing, there were no international observers to observe what was going on in Gabon. So the election was not free and fair. 
So the announcement of Ali Bongo as the president of Gabon arose the people. And then they decided to go into the street and also the senior Gabonese military officers appeared on television to announce that they have taken over. So we have seen that in Gabon, but also we have seen that in Niger. Niger in terms of Niger, in terms of natural resources, it is, it is blessed. It is endowed with a lot of natural resources. It has uranium, it has oil, it, it is rich in flora and fauna. Niger in square kilometers, it is 2.5 bigger than the country of France. It has a lot of space. But when you look at its people, they are languishing in poverty. They are suffering since they got political independence in 1960. They are still suffering till today. While France has enjoyed the relationship, the unjust and equal relationship with Niger, 60% of uranium is extracted by France. And 60% uh, of all electricity in France depend on Niger uranium. This is what causing the conflict in Niger. And this, among other factors, influenced the coup d'etat to happen. Niger has experienced five coup d'etat since they got their political independence in 1960. We have seen one coup after another one coup after another. And after the recent coup d'etat where President Muhammad Bazoum was eliminated by Abdul Rahman Tiachan, proclaimed himself a leader by taking over from Muhammad Bazoum. Why Muhammad Bazoum was eliminated? Remember, Muhammad Bazoum also came into power unconstitutionally because the constitution of Niger demands that in order for a person to become a president in Niger, he must be born in Niger. But President Muhammad Bazoum was not born in Niger. And this caused unrest in Niger. So they, they felt that they were not led, they were not represented by their own. So the coup was widely condemned by United States of America, by ECOWAS and AU. And remember, Abdul Rahman Tiachin also um, announced that the French ambassador in Mie, in Niamey, was given 48, 48 hours to leave the country. The coups happened in Niger. And also in Burkina Faso, these are West African countries, which are also influenced in many ways. They are under the colonial influence of France till today. In January 23rd, 2022, the military officer, Paul Damida, took power by force from President Christine Gabore. This is very recent. Only 2022, Paul Damida took power through a coup d'etat from President Christine Gabore. And the reason why he decided to do that, he was not happy with the terrorizing of security in Burkina Faso due to Islamic insurgency. This was the reason why they decided to overthrow Christian Gabori. But Damiba rule was, however, short lived because in September 30, he was also overthrown by another captain, Ibrahim Traor. He took over by becoming the world's youngest president at age 34. And also, he complained about the insecurity issues in Burkina Faso. And when he went to Russia, in Russia African summit, he delivered a speech. And I would love to quote what he said. 
as the youngest president in West Africa, Ibrahim Traor said the following words, and I quote, my generation does not understand this. How can Africa, which has so much wealth, become the poorest continent in the world today? And why African leaders travel to the world to beg? This is the spirit of the young people in Africa, not only to President Ibrahim Traor. The young people in Africa, we are asking ourselves, why are we languishing in poverty? Why are we suffering with the unemployment while our continent is full of natural resources? Africa is blessed with flora and fauna. We have all the minerals, mention them, we have them, but we are still suffering. We look poor and we feel poor. Why there is conflict in every, in many parts of Africa? The young people, we are asking ourselves these questions every single day. Africa is making other continents rich. Africa is making other civilizations rich. It seems like the world cannot develop without Africa. Africa has become the hunting ground. That's why we see conflict every single day. Because conflict has also become mud billion industry. People are benefiting out of these conflicts. Look at the situation in Congo for how many years now? For how many years international organizations have failed to bring peace to Congo? African Union has failed, has not yet managed to bring peace to DRC Congo. The young people, we are asking ourselves, why? The Okwas, East African community, have not yet managed to bring peace to DRC Congo. We are asking ourselves, why? Are we incompetent? Are we not the children of the most powerful God? What is the reason? So in the same spirit with Ibrahim Traor, this is the reason why there is unrest in Africa. And young people are demanding for change. That's why I am saying the coup d'etats that are happening today are not as bad as they were happening in 1960s. These ones are happening because of corruption, a culture of in conflict, and also an equal distribution of resources. But also we have seen coup d'etats happening in Guinea in a similar fashion to other nations. Guinea, uh, Guinean army, they also captured the president, President Alpha Conde, 83 years of age. And then they took power by force. And the leader was Mamadi Domboya. Remember, President Alpha Conde came into power constitutionally. He was the founding father of Guinea. Guinea, but later on, he changed the constitution so that he may become the president for the third term. And that was unconstitutional. He changed the constitution so that he can continue to serve. He forgot the African proverb, which says, even the best dancer leave the stage. He was, a, he was not inspired from the within, to leave power like what Nelson Mandela did. He led South Africa for only one term and then he went into his honeymoon. He did not follow the example of Julius Kambarage Nyerere who left power willingly. President Alpha Conde wanted to continue and continue and continue. This is also among the reasons why there are coup d'etats and uh, more coup d'etats will happen if African leaders don't change their attitude of respecting constitution and respecting term limits. So President Conde changed the constitution by the refer referendum to allow himself to secure a third term, which sparked the protest, but still ruled for a third time. Gu Guinea announced 
high taxes, and also they increase overspending in the presidential office and also into the na National assembly, assembly. The life of common mwananchi, common citizen, was hard and difficult. But for them, they were enjoying life. This is the reason why Kujita happened. But also in Mali. Mali is the country in West Africa that has experienced more coup d'etats within 10 years than any other West African countries. Within 10 years, we have, we have seen three coup d'etats happening in Mali. And since 2000, 2020, 2020, we have seen two coup d'etats happening in Mali. We had the first coup d'etat happened in August 2020 and the second one in May 2021. The first coup d'etat happened when President Ibrahim Keita was removed by a group of military officers. And then later on, these military officers were also removed by President Asimi Goita. And right now, Asimi Goita is the president of Mali. But uh, ECOWAS, an African Union, together with friends, has also su suspended joint cooperation with, him, with, with, with Malian military. Goita still remains the interim president of Mali. And uh, how I wish the president of Mali could follow the example of the former president of Ghana, Jerry John Rowling. He also went into power. He came into power through coup d'etat in 1979. And then he led for three years. And then he influenced the country to go into democratic processes. And then through democratic processes, Jerry John Rowling was elected president of Ghana. And he led Ghana for two terms from coup d'etats into becoming a democratic, democratically elected president. And he led Ghana in a more democratic way than ever before. And also he allowed his successor, John Atamil, to take the lead from him. So my dear brothers and sisters, the younger generation, it is better to understand that leadership is not a sprint. Leadership is a real race, handling the baton to the next generation. Our mothers and sisters in power, we are asking you to pass the baton. Don't stay too long, you are going to spoil it. Don't stay too long, you are going to be removed. Because the spirit of Thomas Sankara is alive and well. The spirit of Amilka Cabral is alive and well. The spirit of Kwame Nkrumah is alive and well. You are not safe. Pass the baton. Train young people. Mentorship is very key. Call them closer to you and start mentoring them. Start preparing them to take the lead. By doing this, we will take Africa to the next level. We have also experienced the coup d'etats in Chad Chad is another country in Africa which also experienced the coup d'etat. This was in 2021, April 20, in 2021. Chadian President Idris Deby was killed by a military rebel group initiated by Chadian rebel group called FACT, the abbreviation FACT, which stands for Front for Change and Concord in Chad, putting the end of his 30-year rule. He stayed in power for too long, and he was removed by a rebel group. When you stay in power for too long, you don't respect the Constitution. You don't respect term limits. Chances are very high. You're going to be removed, and your end is not going to be good. So his, his son, Muhammad Idris Debi, Itto, Itno, took power from his father 
after his father being assassinated. He promised the people of Chad that within two years, he will leave power. But within two years, he never left power. He never influenced democratic processes to get a civilian president. And right now, Chad is not settled. And if he continue that way, the same might happen in Chad as what has happened to his father, President Idris Deby. Learn from John, Jerry John Rowling. Initiate democratic processes to get democratic leaders. By that, you will bring peace to your country, you bring peace to Africa, and young people will learn a lot from you. So my dear brothers and sisters, the reason why I'm saying the coup d'etats, the current coup d'etats, will continue to happen unless something is done because political freedom without economic freedom is the continuation of colonialism and continuation of slavery. There is no dignity in poverty. Young people cannot rest if there is poverty. They cannot rest if they have no food on the table. They will do whatever to make sure that they survive. Remember, we are still operating under the laws of the jungle, survival of the fittest and the dying of the least suitable. I'm not influencing bad things to happen to Africa, but I'm representing the young people and we are called upon our leaders to involve more youth, to think about their future, preparing them and listening to their voices. The coup d'etats, are the voices of the unheard. The coup d'etats are the voices of revolution. The coup d'etats are the voices of change. People want to be free in all spheres of life, especially economic freedom. We have seen from other parts of Africa, for example, to be specific, in South Africa, through the leadership of Julius Malema. Julius Malema, with his party, Economic Freedom Fighters, they have realized political freedom without economic freedom is the continuation of colonialism and the continuation of slavery. Perhaps Julius Malema is the new Joshua that has come to take South Africa to the promised land. Perhaps Julius Malema has come to take Africa to the promised land. We need more economic freedom. We need more development. We need more advanced technology. We have refused and will continue to, refu to, to, to refuse being on the end side of history. We are tired of being beggars. We are tired of following hands script from developed countries. We also want to become developed nations. Tunaitaji kuendelea. Tunaitaji kuwa na maisha mazuri. Tunaitaji watoto wetu wa some tena shule nzuri tu. We need a revolution. We need economic liberation. My dear brothers and sisters, referring to the words of Samora Moises Mashel, Remember what he said, a luta continue. The struggle must continue. And this should be an anthem, a luta continue, a luta continue. If you are if you are a young people living in Africa, don't give up. Continue to fight. Continue to educate yourself. Equip yourself with information knowledge because you are the next most, you are the next Joshua to lead your country to the promised land. You can still make it, even though you are still circumnavigating in the wilderness of unemployment. There's a future for you. Even if there is still 
a Jordan River of unemployment, you are going to make it if you follow the right path. Follow the footsteps of Mwalimu Nyerere. Follow the footsteps of Amelka Kabra. Follow the footsteps of Nkwame Nkrumah. The future is promising. I would love to wish you all the best, my dear brothers and sisters, as you're working hard to make ends meet. Don't run away from Africa. Stay here. If you only go outside Africa, go for exposure and come back to build this mother Africa. Africa is the land of our ancestors. It's a beautiful place. We can build it together. Remember what Francis Omar Fanon said, and I would love to quote, each generation must find its mission and fulfill it or betray it in relative or personal. What is your mission for this continent, Africa? What is our mission as young people of this continent, Africa? Don't die in the Sahara Desert as you're seeking, as you're running away to enter Europe illegally. Don't get drowned in the Mediterranean Sea as you're seeking to enter Europe in illegal ways. Equip yourself and build yourself if you go there, you go there as a free individual. You go there to contribute to the wealth of the nation because you're not a child of a lesser God. The mission, our mission is economic liberation. Let us go outside and get exposed. Let us learn about internet. Let us learn about business. Let us follow the ideas and the advice of Ngugi Wathiyo decolonizing the mind, because the mind is the best standard of a man. If you can conquer here, you will conquer it here. Remember the advice Kugi Wasiongo gave to Waiyaki. You are the Waiyaki of today. He told the Waiyaki, go there and learn the ways of a white man. Go outside and learn the ways of Arab man. Go there and learn the ways of China man and the Japanese and the Indians, how they do business, learn from other civilizations. And when you get this exposure, come back and build Africa. In Africa, we are 1.4 billion people. If we can train our mind, our mind will be able to deliver thoughts and we can bring peace, we can bring development and all the things we have been looking for. Now is the time. My dear brothers and sisters, a luta continua, a luta continua.